Hello and welcome to Nunley Math. I'm your host Aaron Nunley. Thank you so much for joining us today as we continue our study of Algebra 1 looking at application problems. Um, this is I believe our fourth or fifth video in that series and as we're working our way through we're trying to tackle more and more challenging um, uh, uh, relationships that can be modeled um, using algebraic expressions. Um, today's probably going to be a little bit of a shorter video because much of what we're going to talk about today has already been expressed in the other videos. We're just going to work on expanding it just a little bit and making sure we clarify one or two big things before we move on to um, what I would consider to be some of the most challenging application problems in the next couple videos. Um, for today, we want to talk about applications that are more difficult because they have more than one unknown. Now this has been brought up before in a couple different examples a couple videos ago. Let me remind you of those. Um, we talked about consecutive integer problems where the first number in a sequence is x, the second number in that sequence would be x plus 1, and the third number in that sequence would be x plus 2. And we talked about how we can find all of those numbers um, if we know uh, uh, their relationship to one another. We've talked about consecutive even integer problems and consecutive odd integer problems, which use very similar relationships to the consecutive integer problems. It's just that the spacing between the numbers is, uh, grows by 2 and by 4, as opposed to growing by 1 each time. We talked about some geometric applications of this kind of problem. Specifically, we looked at the triangle sum problem and we looked at perimeter problems. But the one thing that we made sure that we expressed in each of these examples is that we want to avoid using additional variables if at all possible. If we pick an x like we did down here in the triangle sum problem, we want to try and uh, phrase the other unknowns in terms of x, expressions written in x. So x, 2x, x minus 56, or x for the width and 3x minus 5 for the length. This ability to keep our expressions to a single variable um, makes the problems much, much simpler to solve than if we were to introduce a second variable into the mix. I only have, I believe, four examples today for you. Um, the first is very similar to the consecutive integer problems we've solved before. It says, give an expression that can be used to find the sum of an even number half the next even number and one-fourth the next even. We have an even number, half the next even number, and one-fourth of the next even number. There are three even numbers mentioned here that we do not know. The first one of course we would call x. Since we're talking about even numbers, the next even number in that sequence would be x plus 2, and the third even number would be x plus 4. Now, the expression up here asks us not to just to add those three numbers together, but it says take the sum of the first one, half the next one, and one-fourth of the next one. An even number, half the next even number, and one-fourth of the next even number. We can write this actually fairly simply once we know what our three numbers are represented as or what expressions are representing those three numbers. An even number is very easy to write. That's just going to be x. Since we're doing the sum, we're going to add that to half the next even. Not x plus 2, but half of x plus 2. This expression x is the first number. We're doing half the second and, since we're adding, one-fourth the next even. One-fourth of the x plus 4. Notice that once we have our expressions or variable and variable expressions for each of these numbers, we can almost literally translate this down. We're just finding the sum of the even, half the next even, and one-fourth the next even. Not too bad, right? Let me go ahead and show that to you. Put it all in bold, all in a single color, so that we know that the final solution is just that expression. 
But you know, I can do this with problems that don't involve just integer sequences. I can talk about all kinds of relationships this way. For example, packages of gummy candies cost 50 cents less than packages of chocolate candies. Give an expression to represent the cost of three packages of chocolate and four packages of gummies. Notice there are two unknowns here. I don't know the cost of the chocolate. I also don't know the cost of the gummies. So I'm going to list those two things and I need to assign variables to them. What you want to avoid is calling one of them x and the other y. You don't want two variables. Instead, what you want to do is write one of them as a variable and the other as an expression using that variable. Let's go back up here and read this again. Packages of gummy candies cost 50 cents less than packages of chocolate candies. So when I go up here to the cost of gummy candies, I know that value should be 50 cents less than whatever I use for chocolates. So how about we call this 50 cents less than C, and we'll just say that C stands for chocolates. See how I did that? One of those is in a variable. The other is an expression based on that variable. Now, I almost defined these backwards. Since I was finding 50 cents less than the packages of chocolate, I actually wrote this first, 50 cents less than chocolate, and then I filled in chocolate later on. Most of the time, it's going to be easier to write it that way than to write it the other way around. Here's what the problem says. It says, give the cost of three packs of chocolate and two packs of gummies. Three packs of chocolate and two packs of gummies. Well, that's pretty easy to write. Three packs of chocolate. I've already said that a pack of chocolate costs C. So three packs of chocolate and, and is an addition word, two packs of gummies. Well, we said the gummies cost C minus 50 cents. There you go. I have three times the cost of the chocolates and two times the cost of the gummies. There's your expression. A couple things worth mentioning. First of all, um, notice that since this is an expression, I'm not saying it equals something else. I could do that. Same thing over here. Expressions don't have equal signs. The second thing I want to make sure you're aware of is I did not have to use C for chocolate and C minus 50 cents for gummies. I could have called gummies G and written an expression in G to represent the cost of the chocolate candies. Um, there is more one than one way to represent this. Now, I say that because this expression only works if C is chocolate and C minus 50 cents is gummies. If I had made C gummies, this would not be true. That's part of the reason why it's so important whenever you're working in algebra to make sure you state very clearly what your variable stands for, because what your variable stands for can change the outcome. In my class, if you did not write this, I would not even accept it. I would require you to go back and do it again. Let's try another example. In a popular video game, a harvesting tool costs 300 less than a glider. Give an expression showing the cost of four gliders and two harvesting tools. In this problem, there are two things I don't know. I don't know the cost of the harvesting tool, and I don't know the cost of the glider. One of those is going to be my variable, the other is going to be an expression written in that variable. Let's go back and read the problem again. A harvesting tool, that's the first one written here, is 300 less than a glider. A harvesting tool is 300 less than a glider. Well, I can write 300 less than a glider as a G minus 300, if, of course, the glider costs G. Notice, once again, I wrote the expression first and used that to help me give the variable G. The problem says, we want an expression showing the cost of four gliders and two harvesting tools. Four gliders and two harvesting tools. Well, four is pretty easy. The cost of the gliders is given to us here. That's G. And 
2. A harvesting tool costs G minus 300. G minus 300. Uh, notice mine says C. That is actually a typo. So we'll fix that real quick and make it into a G. There you go. G minus 300. And of course, I carried my typo down as well. We'll fix that real quick. G minus 300. Notice I have a variable and an expression in that variable. Now, if you look over here on the right, I called this example 3B because it's actually the exact same uh, problem. What I've done instead is I'd like to go back and I'd like to redefine this problem so that instead of using G as the cost of a glider, I'm using H as the cost of a harvesting tool. This tells me that a harvesting tool costs 300 less than a glider. So if H is a harvesting tool, how much does a glider cost? Hopefully you're thinking H plus 300. H plus 300. The cost of a glider is 300 more than a ha the cost of a harvester because the harvester is 300 less than the glider. If I define my variables this way, it changes my final expression. For a glider is no longer a G as it was here on the left. A glider is now H plus 300. And two, a harvesting tool we said was H. There's your expression. Notice that this expression is very, very different from this expression. But both of these express the same relationship, the relationship between the cost of a glider and the cost of a harvester, and then an expression showing if we bought four of one and two of the other. They're both equally correct, but neither is correct unless you tell me what your variables mean. If your variables are not given, then I have to guess what they mean, and I never guess in your favor. Let's try this again. Now, in example four, Mr. Nunley's three-on-three -three basketball team is amazing. Mr. Nunley scored four more than double the number of points LeBron scored. LeBron scored 10 fewer points than Michael. If the team scored 102 points, how many did each player score? Notice what we're asked to do. It says, if the team scored 102, how many did each player score? This word each tells me I'm looking for more than one solution. I'm looking for Mr. Nunley's points. LeBron's points and Michael's points. If we go back through and read this again, we can find out a couple pieces of information. Mr. Nunley's three on three basketball team is amazing, really is not a worthwhile expression. We called that earlier in this unit a useless expression because it serves no purpose mathematically. Instead, all this does is flesh out the story and feed Mr. Nunley's ego. So we're going to get rid of that. Mr. Nunley scored four more points than double the number of points LeBron scored. LeBron scored 10 fewer than Michael. Notice Mr. Nunley's score is given as the expression four more than double LeBron. Can we write that as an expression? Four more than double LeBron? Well sure, 2L plus 4. That only works though if LeBron scores L points. Lastly, it says LeBron scored 10 fewer than Michael. Now we're trying to get Michael's points, but we want to write Michael's in terms of L. If LeBron scored 10 fewer than Michael, that means Michael scored 10 more than LeBron. Well, that works out really nicely because the problem says all together we scored 102 points. So I can take those values, my points, LeBron's points, and Michael's points, and add them together to get a total. And then I just fill in what I know. Mr. Nunley scored 2L plus 4. We have to combine that with what LeBron scored. And we combine that with what Michael scored. And when we're done, we've scored 102 points. Now, let's go through and simplify this. I combine my like terms. I get 4L plus 14 equals 102. I'm going to subtract the 14 from both sides, divide both sides by 4, 
and I find that LeBron scored 22 points. Now, once I know LeBron's points, I can calculate the others. Mr. Nunley is 2 times 22 plus 4, and Michael is 22 plus 10. LeBron scored 22, so Mr. Nunley scored 2 times 22 plus 4, which is 48. Michael scored 22 plus 10, which is 32. Hopefully you found this useful. If so, um, please take a moment and leave us a comment in the comment section so that we know that you're watching. If you have ideas for improvement, we'd love to hear about those as well. Uh, please be sure to like and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you can follow along with us as we're working our way through Algebra 1. Uh, we look forward to hearing from you again very, very soon. Best of luck to all of you. Take care.